Um, I think you have a long-term slowdown in the Chinese economy. So this year, I think they probably will achieve 6.5% growth. Uh, next year, I think, don't be surprised if growth is less than 6%. And you know, if we're having this conversation in 2018, you know, growth could be close to 5%. But I stick to the view that there will be no hard landing in China. China has a number of problems with its old heavy industries and debt to those old heavy industries like the steel industry, the coal industry, um, heavy manufacturing. But the economy is refocusing towards the service sector and the consumer sector, and infrastructure spending remains very strong. Um, I've got to ask you, because I know your answer is going to be good. <laughs> um, the sky is going to fall on Friday morning. We're all going to retire and pull up our drawbridges, plant yeah. vegetables, buy guns, buy silver. Well, um, what's going to happen? Well. Uh, you mentioned Goethe Dammering, and, and as an amateur double bass player, I'm very keen on Goethe Dammering. It's got yes. a wonderful, like most Wagner, it has a, great a wonderful throb double, to it. double yes. bass uh, uh, part. And, um, uh, you know, I think as an economist, I have to say, I don't buy uh, a lot of the, the, the economic arguments. I think the economic arguments are not very strong either way. And I think the big challenge for Britain economically is not whether we are in or out of Europe, it's whether we engage uh, with the growing economies of the world. And we should stop navel gazing and start actually, you know, having uh, exports again, which is something you know we haven't had a trade surplus since the late '80s. Um, that's actually the key issue. Um, and uh, the economic uh, uh, uncertainty of leaving, I think, is also equaled by the economic uncertainty of staying. As well. It's it's a mix. It really depends bank by bank. I think the overall trend is that banks are becoming more and more open to the idea <laughs> of working with uh, technology providers and working with startups. And I think it's because. You know, and my background is in trading, and I've seen technology start to influence trading you know, as early as seven, eight years ago. Um, but every part of the investment banking value chain, technology is starting to influence how business is done. And I think bankers are realizing that if they want to be competitive next year, five years from now, ten years from now, they have to be proactive about it, which means they have to go out and uh, collaborate with startups. I think that's the, the big question. Um, you know, we've been talking about a raising right environment for four or five years now and the great rotation, and it hasn't transpired yet. So what I think it shows is that markets are really hard at the time. Um, picking peaks and troughs are, are very, very difficult. So the best way to really navigate a, a world of uncertainty is by focusing on the long term. That the markets will go through a cycle. So find an asset allocation strategy that you like that's fits with your uh, risk profile and be disciplined and stick to it.